Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We serve an awesome God. Amen. His power, hallelujah, is always on display. He's still a miracle worker, and he's a wonder in my soul. Let's go to the word of God as we share uh, from the book of Zechariah. Amen. Zechariah chapter number two, verses one uh, through five from the Good News translation of the Bible. Uh, welcome, welcome from whatever parts of the world you're coming uh, in from. Uh, we are grateful that you're spending this time uh, in our hour of power as we study God's word, as we grow in faith and development, as we become uh, the people who God has ordained us to be. Amen. Uh, what a wonderful day. I'm Pastor Jones, uh, the pastor of the great St. James AME Church, African Methodist Episcopal Church, and the wonderful city of Titusville in the great sunshine state of Florida. Uh, let's go uh, and and let's, let's see and hear what God is saying. Hallelujah. And doing. Amen. In Zechariah chapter number two, verses one through verse number five. In another vision, I saw a man with a measure of God in his hand. Where are you going? I asked. To measure Jerusalem, he answered, to see how long and how wide it is. Then I saw the angel who had been speaking to me step forward. And another angel came to meet him. The first one said to the other, run and tell the young man with the measuring line that there, that there are going to be so many people and so much livestock in Jerusalem that it will be too big to have walls. The Lord has promised that he himself will be a wall of fire around the city to protect it and that he will live there in all his glory. I love it. I love it. I love verse number four is where we're going to focus on. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you for this day. and We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you that you brought us together to hear your word. Now let we pray that we will be doers of the word and not hearers only. Bless us that we might be a blessing. Strengthen us that Others may find strength as well. We pray, dear God, for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as we walk in the favor of God in 2024. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse number four. The first one said to the other, run and tell that young man with a measuring line that there are going to be so many people and so much livestock in Jerusalem that it will be too big to have walls. What a prophetic message about the kingdom of faith beyond the walls. I want to share uh, on this map, God is enlarging our territory. God is enlarging our territory. There was a prophetic message right there in chapter two of the book of Zechariah that there was a man with a measuring line in his hand and he was asked a question and then he gave an answer. He was measuring to see how long and how wide city because God was getting ready to enlarge their territory. He was getting ready to do allow them to do ministry beyond the wall. They were wanted to grow beyond their capacity. I believe that every church has the ability to grow and to do ministry beyond the walls and the boundaries that either you have set up or others have set up for you. I believe that, that God wants to expand your territory. This is what Jesus said. Come follow me and I'll make you fishing for me. This is what Jesus said. 
Go ye therefore <clears throat> and, 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 and baptize in the name of Jesus. Go ye therefore, go. So we got to go. Uh, where do we go? We go where he sends us. Go to all the parts of the world. And, and Acts chapter one, he says, he says, uh, I'm sending you to the uttermost parts of the world. And and in Matthew 28, he said, Go make disciples of all nations, all nations, all people. And, and so God is expanding our territory. He's enlarging our territory. He's uh, allowing us uh, uh, to witness to more people. God is blessing us to be kingdom builders. Lord have mercy. Um, God is expanding our ministry far beyond our eyes can see. The purpose of the book of Zacharias was to give hope to God's people by revealing God's future deliverance through the Messiah and God's future claim of growing the city. Some people feared the days to come, wondering what evil lurked in the shadows. Others consulted prophets and other people trying to desperately discover what was ahead. The future of the people was uncertain after 70 years of captivity, the vast sea of the unknown, holding joy or terror, comfort or pain, love or loneliness. The people needed hope. Zechariah, like Moses, Elijah, Elisha, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Hosea, Amos, and others, faithfully delivered God's message to God's people. Despite rejection, ridicule, and persecution. And now God has called you. He's called me. And despite ridicule, rejection, and persecution, we must faithfully deliver God's words to God's people. We must go beyond the wall. We must come from our comfort zone. We must make full proof of the ministry. We must go to the uttermost parts of the world. We must make disciples of all nations. Hallelujah. God wanted the temple to be rebuilt in, in the book of Zacharias and he had the gold and silver to do it. But he needed willing hands. God has chosen to do his work through people. He provides the resources, but willing hands must do the work. Are your hands available to do God's work in the world? Or are you willing to go beyond the wall? Don't you know that God is enlarging our territory? God has called you and I. He's encouraging us in his word to stay on the wall. He's encouraging us to fight to the finish. God is encouraging us. In Matthew 5 and 16, he says in the same way, let your good deeds shine out, Lord have mercy, for all to see, New Living Translation so that everyone will praise your heavenly father. So we are reminded that we should be intentional. We should be willing. And God has commanded us to go. Kingdom faith and doing ministry beyond the walls is imperative, but sometimes challenging. So God challenges us to do more and to go to places we've never been. He's extending our territory, kingdom faith, and kingdom building, going beyond the wall, compels us to go where we don't want to go. 
challenges us to do, we might not be willing to do. Faith beyond walls, kingdom building, expanding our territory compels us to face fear despite danger, to face fear when others don't have the faith to face it. I just want to remind you that God has more work for you and I to do. God has his measuring <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and and he's already measured other areas for us to go to. He's already prepared the way. There's an expectation from God for God's leaders, for God's followers to make more disciples. God is getting ready to expand our territory. Get excited. Be prepared mentally. Stay focused. Don't be distracted. Watch and pray. But believe God has more work for us to do. It takes unity. It takes faith. It takes time. It takes an effort and energy. It takes a willing mind, willing body, willing spirit. It takes all of us. God has a great work for us to do. He's expanding our territory so that we can do ministry beyond the norm. Are you willing? Are you prepared mentally? Will you embrace your call? Will you trust God through the process? Lord have mercy. The church must be a church without walls. The church without walls is always with you. Jesus told his disciples, Come follow me and I will make you fish of people. He went about all Galilee, preaching, teaching, and healing. If you are to see church growth, if you are to see change in the community and a changed world, we must put some effort and time in so that people can be equipped. The United States have never fought war without weapons and a plan or a strategy. The question becomes, do you have a plan for your local ministry? Do you have a plan? If you have a plan, will you go through with the plan? I believe that, that when leadership shares a vision and put a plan in order, that if we would work together, we can make a difference. Lives can be changed and souls can be saved. Ephesians 4, 11 through 13, let us know that it takes gifts. It takes different people with different gifts uh, to grow, to grow the church, to go beyond the wall. Listen carefully. And he's, he himself gave some to be apostles. Some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, different leadership roles, fivefold ministry called. Why? For the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. God has given us leaders with different gifts to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ to build up the body of Christ build up the church till we all come to the unity of the faith. God is bringing us all together in unity through, through the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to give us more knowledge about who Jesus is. 
so that we may be a perfect, to, to a perfect man, to the measure of statue of the fullness of Christ. The only way we can uh, know the fullness of Christ is we manifest uh, those gifts and within those leaders, those leadership roles, and then our spiritual gifts uh, that are found in Romans 12 and in 1 Corinthians 12. When we have the gifts and we have leaders who uh, have and believe in the fivefold ministry, we can do greater works than they. Lord have mercy. Uh, the church that God has called us to be is always empowered, always enlightened, always encouraging, always equipping. Sometimes the ground we stand upon is shaken. Sometimes we're tossed and turned by the world. So much so that we forget who we are and the God we serve. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes we, we let go in. And, and instead of letting God, we ought to let go and let God instead of letting go and running away. Lord have mercy. Uh, if we want to serve this present age, we have to be equipped. If we want to serve this present age, we have to have the right mindset, right attitude. And we have to be willing to go beyond the walls. We, we have to know that when God is expanding our territory, that we got to put our best foot forward. We, we got to give it all that we have. I'm reminded of 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse number 7. It says, but as for you, be strong and do not give up, for your work will be rewarded. Lord have mercy. I talked about the challenge you face in life and in ministry. Sometimes it can be a burden. Sometimes it can be draining, overwhelming. It can be a strain. Uh, but don't be weary, Galatians 6 and 9. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. And then in 2 Chronicles 15 and 7, he reminds us to be strong. The Lord reminds us not to give up. And he reminds us that our work will be rewarded. Be strong. Don't give up. Because your work will be rewarded. When we do these things, the world can receive kingdom faith. To do kingdom building. To go beyond the wall. So that our territory can be expanded or enlarged. We can go out and lift people to the power and in the name of Jesus, to the power of the Holy Ghost. We can reach the master. We can stop the violence. We can better deal with social injustice. We can do more for the hungry and the helpless and the homeless. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all people unto me. Hallelujah. We got to be willing to lift up the name of Jesus. He was lifted up on Calvary, but we can lift him up in our testimony. We can lift him up as we witness. We can lift him up as we worship. We can lift him up as we work. The church with our wall, the church that God is enlarging, and expand is always confident, not in ourselves, but in the God that called us, and in the God that saved us, and the God that served, that called us to serve, and the God that we are serving. I just want to let you know that God is expanding our territory. Hallelujah. Let us prepare to pray with strength and for courage. Let us prepare to pray that more people will be saved. Let us prepare to pray that God's will will be done in our lives. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we come in the name of Jesus saying thank you. Thank you for Preparing our hearts and our minds as you expand our territory. 
as you enlarge our territory, as you create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us, strengthen our hand to do the work that you called us to do, strengthen our mind. We pray that we don't be deceived by the world and that we don't fall in love with the world. Your word declares love, not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For he that loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him or her. I pray that we will put you first in all things, that we will seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the other things that we need will be added unto us. I pray to God that we let our light so shine for people that they may see our good works and glorify our Father, which is heaven. God, we come as we look to the hills from whence cometh our help, knowing that all of our help comes from the Lord. We pray for unity, dear God, in the name of Jesus. We pray to God for patience and persistence at the same time. We pray in the name of Jesus that lives change through our ministry, that souls are saved through our ministry, that people or encourage and burdens are lifted. We pray for breakthrough and blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. We rebuke anything that comes to divide us. We come, we pray for anything against anything that comes to cause doubt, and cause pain, and cause fear. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus. You have given us, hallelujah, uh, the spirit of power and love and sound mind. So we rebuke the spirit of fear. We rebuke the spirit of doubt. We, we rebuke that spirit of poverty. We rebuke that lazy spirit in the name of Jesus to God. Hallelujah. And God will be careful as you bless us to be a blessing. We'll be careful to give you the praise, give you the honor, give you the glory in the name of Jesus. We're praying to God, hallelujah, that you will send forth more labors into the harvest, dear God, in the name of Jesus, people who have a love for you, God, people who are committed to you, dear God, people who will not live in fear, but will walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. God, we say thank you that the best is yet to come. We say thank you, dear God, hallelujah, for opening our eyes to see, dear God, that you have more for us, dear God, to do in ministry, more for our families, more for our friends, more for our community. We pray against the injustices and the social issues and concerns that we have in every community, dear God, in the name of Jesus. And we pray even for the people at the border, dear God, with what's going on as people come from different countries to America, try to find a better way and a better way of life. We pray that you will lead uh, our government to handle these situations the right way. We pray that families are not separated from their children, dear God, and we pray that their needs are met. We know that we can't accept everyone, but we pray that some people have an opportunity, dear God, and that they make the most of it. And we pray that that people who are criminals and people uh, who don't have uh, the right mindset and who do not have the heart of God, we pray that you would change their ways and change their minds, dear God. We pray that they're saved and delivered, dear God, and if it's your will, let them come. If it's not your will, then you prevent it. But whatever you do, dear God, any way you bless us, God, we'll be satisfied. But we pray that we'll be willing to go to the uttermost parts of the world. We pray, dear God, in the name of Jesus, that we will be bold, dear God, in the name of Jesus. We pray that we will use our gifts, dear God, to make a difference. We pray in the name of Jesus for the courage that is needed in this season in ministry. In the name of Jesus, dear God, we pray for the sick and the afflicted. We pray for those who are in the hospital. We pray for those in the nursing home. We pray for those, Lord, have mercy, right. bound in jail and in prison. We pray that you just bless us and that we be a blessing. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. May the Lord God bless you. May the Lord keep you. If you need a church home, St. James is the place to be. Hallelujah. If you need a pastor, I would love to be your pastor. If you need prayer, just let us know. I would love to pray with you, counsel with you, encourage you. Whatever you need, God's got it. If it's not here at St. James, God has it somewhere else for you. But we want you to find a place to call home, a place 
where you can grow and work out your own soul salvation. God is expanding our territory. May God bless you. May God keep you. This is Pastor Jones. I look forward to sharing with you in days to come. Take care. And remember, God has smiled on me and God is smiling on you. Hallelujah.